So it's six o'clock on, um, what is today, April the 20th, and I'm gonna call to order the regularly scheduled select board meeting. Um, first item is to set, adjust the agenda. We have a lot on the agenda. Anything to take off? <laughs> Any changes? Oh, you got something to take off? Yeah, so we didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, they have not, uh, the LCT has not gotten back to you. They haven't come through with the traffic they course. Through with, all they had to do was review it. Yeah. And, uh, they, Jeez, I'm even I reviewed it. I know. <laughs> I think we could probably call it good, but they got this whole portal system that they can't figure out right now. Okay, so we want to wait for their approval and we'll do it next time? Um, Is that the... What item is that? Uh, seven. Item seven. Item seven. Yeah. I mean, it must. If they have any tweaks, it's going to be small, so we could. Let's just wait. Just wait. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's going to be that point. What would we do? Re review a document pending approval? Process. No, we could just approve it, and if they came up with something else, we approve a different one next time. You still have to sign it. Yeah. Okay. So if it takes 30 days, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Right. What do you guys think? Want to leave it on the agenda? Liz says wait. Kaylee doesn't know. Sherry? I haven't, I haven't looked at it. That's the Okay, so let's wait. Okay. So we're going to, so any other changes okay. to the agenda? I love that. Okay, we have a motion to uh, remove item seven till next time. So moved. Uh, Second. Great. All in favor of? Adopting the new agenda without item seven, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, so off we go. Communication from the audience. Anybody here to discuss anything that's not on the agenda? All right. Um, the next is select board to approve minutes from the last regular meeting, which was April the 6th, and the special meeting, which was April the 13th. Okay. In there. I thought the April 6th. Okay, so do we need to punt those? Do we need to just not, we wait on those? Yeah. Okay, so just the April 6th minutes, the regular. I can motion to approve those April 6th minutes. Second. Uh, any discussion? I thought they were good. Yeah. Thank you to minute takers. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? So motion carries, minutes are approved. Um, town manager report given by David Upson. Okay, VHB, uh, which is their uh, consulting firm yeah. out of Chase County, um, will be doing, will be working on the feasibility and scoping study for the Northeast Kingdom towns along the LBRT. They held their kickoff meeting yesterday and will be working on current uh, conditions on the ground in each town along the LBRT in the Northeast Kingdom and uh, presenting suitable locations for trailheads. So um, I invited them to let us know when they're in town so we could show them uh, what's actually going on. And what the trailheads are already going to be. Right. Um, they seem to have a different approach, but hmm. we'll, we'll correct them when they come through Hardwick. Um, final concept approval for the park design we talked about today, um, and we're trying how would you guys like to present that to the public? It's a question. Um, we have a, a, just like a public meeting part of our select board meeting. Do we do another open house? It's not for feedback really, so it's more about just showing what the final, because we got all that feedback. At when are we gonna present it to the board? Um, when they give it to us. Okay. But they wanna know how, it's just a discussion. We, we want to know how we're going to present it to the public. Are we going to put it, go ahead. I like the idea of putting it up at Atkins Field during mm -hmm. Memorial Spring Day. Fest. And Spring. then maybe having a public hearing before a select board meeting after that. Mm -hmm. So if people see it there and they've got questions, they can come here. Yeah. Unless okay. we need to do it before then for some reason. Pardon? Right? Unless we need to do it before then for some reason. I think, yeah, I think that's. Okay. Yeah, that'd be yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think it'd be a great idea to have some of that spring fest. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, uh, great. Okay. We can make that happen. And then if we do a public hearing. That was actually Sherry's idea this morning. <laughs> okay. Don't want to be stealing your thunder. That's all right. 
Um, we also got a uh, high level cost estimate of the park today. They they haven't they, they need to refine it, so it's not they're, they're still hmm. pencil. It's still it's a pencil. lot less than the bridge. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that part was sort of refreshing. <laughs> so a rough number is it was seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Don't know. Oh, so that's not a lot less. No, no. Well, it's, <laughs> it's less. not cheap. It's less. No. Less. But I think we're dialing it in. That's that's yeah. a, That's with the fifteen percent contingency. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Some kind of sixteen hundred dollar kiosk that we aren't going to be getting because right. we already have those. Right. So <laughs> it's not ready. But it's not ready yet. Yeah, it's it's it was very rough. Yep. And how about the bridge itself? <laughs> It's not in my manager's report. Oh, sorry. It, it wasn't on <laughs> No. Wasn't uh, um, we are we're, um, trying to figure out the schedule. Okay. And um, the timeline has. Basically, and then trying to dial in when we can. Um, we need to do some borings. For the abutments? Yeah. Oh. And that's going to be kind of tricky on the um, Main Street side. Yeah. So that's where we're at. I got the proposal from the engineers today, or not today, a couple of days ago, and with the plans on where they need the borings. So we need to find a company to do it. Could that, is that something could be done at night? When, yeah. When traffic is not as mm -hmm. brisk as it is in the daytime? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Um, environmental stuff do we need? I talked to Michael about that today. So we're moving along with that. Okay. A bunch of checklist items with that. Um, the town of Hardwick is eligible for a $105,000 loan from the state of Vermont um, Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund with a $102,000 forgiveness for the lead and copper inventory project that's due in October of 2024, first phase. Um, so with your approval, uh, we'll begin the processing of that application. Obviously, there's going to be you're going to need to um, sign something and do a formal, but we'll just get, get that, started. Get started on that. Great. And that's I've talked about that in the past. The lead copper inventory. We had to go to every service and document what's coming into the house. How do you even know? Do you because you only see what, what enters the house, right? No, we have to actually go in the house. And, I know, but yeah. you don't, you're going to dig up every service line and see what it's compo comprised. Well, you of. can. It's usually what's stubbed up in the basement. Okay. There's, so usually, you're just going to go by whatever comes into the basement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and when they install the meters, they take pictures of every meter. So, so a lot of this is done. You yeah. can just do through the pictures. A lot, a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we will be flushing hydrants on Monday, April 24th uh, through Thursday, April 27th. I don't know why there's an and in there, um, which could result in some brown water showing up at the tap in the areas of the flushing. So that happens every year. I'll probably send out an uh, email on the notification. That'd be great. I don't want to abuse that you list. Aren't. Okay. <laughs> Uh, preliminary laboratory results for the sludge analysis were returned and results were sent to the two landfills. Um, this happened today. Once we get an okay saying they can take our sludge, we'll enter into an agreement for disposal. Dewatering of Lagoon 1 is scheduled to start in mid to late May and continue into early June. So I had some email correspondence with the Franklin County landfill today um, in New York. Oh. That's a new facility. Oh. Or a new option. Yeah. Um, and then the Seneca Meadows, which is still six hours away. How far is, is Franklin? Um, three hours. Oh. So we're just. Um, where is it? Franklin I, County. I don't York. know exactly where it is. Somewhere in Franklin County. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. All right. Thank Amongst you. Amongst all the other things. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Um, I can do, to I have Tom's report here. Yeah, go ahead. Handwritten on a piece of paper. Um, all the main roads have been graded. All the main dirt roads have been graded. Uh, most of the lawns have been cleaned and with the cemeteries. Some street sweeping has been done. Um, fixed mud spots on Mackville, Nichols, Houston, Bailey, Hazen, Dimmick, Warren Lane, Cobb School. Most spots only took one to two loads of stone. That's his. That's, <laughs> That's good. All right. I just have to make a quick 
comment that yeah. driving on some other towns' roads lately, yeah. ours are so good. Thank you. Like, really, really yeah. good. Brooke is an awesome thing. job. Like, if there's mud season in other towns, but not in Hard Rock this year. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Franklin County is on the St. Lawrence River. Yes. It's way up in the way north. Up in the north. north. All right, thank you. Um, next up, uh, Police Department report by Police Chief Mike Henry. Very short. Uh, with Peter, again, I thought I had great news last time, yeah. and it uh, went down within a few days. Mm -hmm. the, with the new, probably the new used the mod equipment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I uh, worked with Berlin Communications for a couple days. What we did is we ended up there giving us a loaner for Peter. We put that in there. Uh, it seems to keep working. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes right now. Um, they've been very nice to us. Uh, we've reconfigured a bunch of our radios right now. And uh, uh, the problem is I've got a, an accurate uh, estimate from them for a brand new computer that's around 19 grand. So a lot more than what uh, initially ballpark did, 12 grand for them. So we'll have to see how this, we're going to give this uh, a trial run for a few months and see how that works. And if we don't have any problems, then it's obviously the computer, uh, not just the components put in the computer. Um, other than that, uh, just waiting for ELCT. Uh, we submitted everything to them, just need to have that the final blessing. I did get an email from them saying that I have a document within the portal. I went into the portal. Documents blank. I called them, and they're like, "Yep, everybody's having that problem right now." So they can't tell me whether or not it's, it's looks like it's complete. But and this is for the traffic ordinance. Yes, this yeah. is for the traffic ordinance. Um, hmm. I think we got that down. So this, so the there's the speed limit part, and then there's the parking part. <clears throat> and what's the uh, there's a third component? To the, the third component is some, some signs. Sign. Right. Yeah. So. And so all of those sections are done? No. Just the speed. Just the speed. The speed. Okay, just that's just what I was sure. Yeah, that. and I'll get to okay. probably the parking next. Okay. And then uh, probably last will be the, the signs. Get those done. Is there any part of that that would address the downshifting, I don't know what it's called, the turn? break. With, yeah. Can we, can we control that through the traffic ordinance? You would have to write a separate ordinance for that in okay. the town. And that would probably be under the signs if you want to do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I have that. to actually look into that one myself. But there's a lot of that going on, and there's there have been quite a few complaints that I've heard. I don't know if they're I not talking to you. No. Yeah. I'll no. make sure that they get to you. I've been places in. in other states where there's signs that are instead of, I mean, well, in Stowe, they have signs that but don't I, do we don't want to write stuff. No, but I, in other, <laughs> we don't, but I can hear that at my house. I can hear that too. Oh, I, yeah, we can hear it everywhere in the village. It's, um, what I was going to say is there have been places where instead of like a hard thou shalt not, they're like kind of friendlier signs mm -hmm. to the truckers, you know. that kind of give People them. live here? <laughs> well. People sleep here? No, friendlier even than that. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, it's a thing. I'll make sure you know who is interested in hearing about that besides myself. I did have one person from the, yeah, I did hear it a little while ago. Not the Jake break, but the complaint. Mm -hmm. It's particularly bad in East Hardwick in the summer because of all of the ag. Mm -hmm. On Route 16. No, in the no. village because the going down the hill, the yep. hills yeah. are so steep, and yep. there's so much ag traffic. Yeah. Uh, yes, I've, I've heard that. <laughs> agricultural vehicles are exempt from everything. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's not just that; it's also truck. There's just a lot of truck. There's a lot of material being moved, and right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any other questions for Mike? Thank you. Thanks, Mike. That Good was luck with the defeater <laughs> nonsense. It is. Yeah. It's Just keep in mind, sometimes Tommy brings us like <clears throat> repair bills for trucks that are that big. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to look for a grant for that. Yeah. Tracy is looking for that. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, next up is uh, Heart of Electric Re Department report given by Vince O'Connell, who I don't see anywhere. Um, we are running a little ahead of our appointed time, and we hope to remain running ahead. Um, so next is item one, select board to consider approving several liquor licenses, which are in here somewhere. I don't remember them. Can you, read them? I can. you got them? Okay. Um, so I can motion to approve a first class license for RBI Hardwick, which is LLC DBA positive pie. Uh, BPLE LLC DPA Caja Taquiera, a third class license for RBI Hardwick LLC positive pie, and an outside consumption permit for positive pie in Hardwick. Um, Looks like, according to this, there are no infractions. But I don't know, Tanya, if there's anything. One's new. The other three are renewals. Great. Uh, so you're moving that we ex we accept them all, or? Yep. Yep. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm excited to see the taco place yeah. open up. Yeah, in a, in a um, non-truck location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That looks great. Yes, yeah, it is good. It's right on the trail, too. Um, Sadly, it's not in our designated downtown. Oh, we didn't stretch that far? No. That can be a little Next is item two, select board to consider approving Hardwick Energy Committee policy. We have Bill Chidsey here, our energy coordinator. Um, People have questions, comments. Bill, do you want to say anything about the um, energy policy? It was just the signature page. Yeah, that's what we did. I'd like to say that I am um, wanting to formalize the relationship with the town with the energy committee to try to elevate its status to attract qualified members. And I also want to have any financial transactions to be absolutely clear and good audit trails because we are able to uh, raise funds to help uh, lower income people with window dressers. And of course, there's the grants with NERP, and I'd like the committee to be able to participate with being current with those applications and to participate with helping the auditors to do a level two assessment rather than just the walkthroughs. Um, energy uh, auditors? <coughs> energy yeah. Next okay. step to the NERP will be applying for the uh, energy assessments, and that step has to be taken to qualify us for the uh, grants. So um, I'm advocating for level two uh, assessments, which will be more detailed and will give the town more information about what, uh, you know, what actions can be taken. Um, more on that as time allows, but I'd like you to consider this as a uh, way to elevate the committee to a more professional level. Okay. Did you write them, Bill? Pardon me? Did you write those? I um, <coughs> reviewed the um, equity committee's policies and used that as guidance. So, yes, I'm the person. <laughs> because I, when I read through them, I came to the to be on this committee, you have to do this and this and this and this. And I came to the, and attend six meetings or something like that before you were considered and thought, I've never seen that before. But I suppose it makes sense because if you're gonna be on the committee, you gotta be willing to show up and show that you're willing to show up. I'd it, like there to be a qualifying process uh -huh. that the committee can recommend a, an applicant to the select board who isn't just a passerby or I'm particularly interested in people that are willing to uh, volunteer yeah, yeah. and work. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying, I've never seen that before, and it, it, it seems like sort of a good idea. Well, my view on energy committees may be different than other towns and other ad hoc <coughs> committees. Uh, my, my view is less of being um, 
Michelle, I see um, advocates and uh, consciousness raisers and politically um, clean energy, but more matter-of-fact actions to help the municipality to reduce waste and to improve our lives. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, outreach to our community for the same serious <laughs> matters. Um, and that's because of my values. Mm -hmm. Well, I can motion that we approve the Harvick Energy Committee policy, if that's what we need to do. Second. <laughs> Discussion? That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, I think six is a, is a, six meetings is a high bar for <laughs> getting into a committee, but I suppose if you're wanting to be on the committee, you start attending meetings and right. I guess, yeah. We'll Get see it. how see how it goes, see if you want to change that later. I think we could uh, demonstrate some flexibility on that. Um, in other towns where I volunteered, um, it's common practice for someone to volunteer for quite a while before they uh, approach this line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Can I, Bill, maybe it's a small tweak of saying like six meetings or events because it could. Um, like it maybe doesn't necessarily have to be like the monthly meeting because then that's six months of that waiting. <laughs> I don't know if that makes our motion complicated, but. It does, do you want to <laughs> amend your motion? Uh, I can amend the motion to approve. So I motion to approve the Hardwick Energy Committee policy with the addition of adding. Uh, or events. Or events to the. Are you amending your previous motion <laughs> to add or events to the six? I'm amending my previous meetings. motion yeah. to add or events to the six meeting requirement. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that because tabling and public events is an important action, mm -hmm. and getting people to do that and have that count when they're. So we have a proposed amendment to the motion. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. Okay. All in favor of approving the amendment, say <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? That was everybody said. That carries. So the motion is now amended. And uh, so back to the original motion. All in favor of approving the energy policy as, as amended? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So the motion carries. Thank you, Bill, for putting that together. About leaving the subject, we have two window dressers measures who are registered. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good progress on window dressers. <laughs> yeah. And then I would leave this behind. It's a, just an update on the MERV application. Okay, great. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. So next is item three, select board to discuss the possibility of using some of the town's fund balance to reduce the amount of the gravel pit bond. And it looks like, um, I know Casey let us know, but uh, she's in our, in our packet, we have a couple of scenarios um, from the Vermont Bond Bank. One is borrowing 400,000, which implies using 100,000 fund balance. And the other is borrowing the full 500,000 that we requested from the voters. And the difference. It's like basically 40K. It's about 40,000. It's like a little it, less. In the payback. In it, it over. 20 years. 20 years, yep. And it leaves less in the fund balance for emergencies or other things that we haven't already voted to through the bond. Yeah. So should we read it out so people who are listening, the different, like the actual numbers? Sure, difference. go ahead. So, well, at our last meeting, we brought this up because we heard a town meeting that some folks were interested in seeing what it would look like if we use some of our fund balance rather than getting the full 500 um, for a bond. But there was a big vote. Everyone voted to approve the bond. So at the last meeting, we wanted to see what the difference would be in terms of interest over time between if we borrowed $400,000 versus $500,000. So the total, if we borrowed $400,000, the total cost would be $559,337. 
And then if we borrow the full 500,000, the total cost over, it's basically 11 years, right? That's the life of the bond. How many years? 20 years. Oh, 20 years, sorry. Mm -hmm. 20 years is $699,173. So they're just about $40,000 in difference. Which is $2,000 a year. And um, so the, and the, it's worth noting that at first those numbers seem much farther apart. That's because the 699 includes the 100,000 more right. principal in the. In yeah. The, right? I think also worthy of note, um, and maybe one thing people were thinking about at town meeting is the recent spikes in interest rates. But this from the Vermont Bond Bank cites an uh, interest rate of 3.68%. That went down from the interest rate in the fall when we originally looked at this. Right. Okay. So it's even lower than. It was lower than the original. Yeah. Do you remember what the original was? I think it was like a, a point. Like four something. It might have been over four. So we get very good terms. Mm -hmm. Which is why the interest cost is not that exorbitant. 40,000 over 20 years, so. I don't know, what's their urgency on approving some course of action? Um, we, the bond bank doesn't, isn't gonna take, um, isn't gonna close, our, this loan wouldn't close till August. So we, we have time to decide. Do we lock the interest rate or does it get set? when we close it. That'd be a question for our business manager. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I, I think this is probably, um, these are probably set. <clears throat> this is the interest rate we're using. Well, it's probably just, I'm, we guess the opposite of that might be a prediction. And Maybe. It could change. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's lower than it was in the fall, I suppose it They're taking, I mean, this is down. the summer bond pool. So oh, okay. Oh. This is what, this is what people are working towards right now. Yep. And where are we with a purchase and sale agreement? Um, we have the lease area and we're the area laying out a proposed telecommunications tower mm -hmm. is the next thing. Okay, so it's still in progress, yeah. in process. Yeah. Okay, but making progress. But it's, it'll be ready soon. Okay. And he knows that the bond is, mm -hmm. the bond bank happens in the summer. Right. Okay. We'd still purchase the property mm -hmm. and then do the loan later. Okay. That's, All right. That's the plan. Okay. So we don't, sounds like we don't need any sort of decision on this now, but we could make one if we wanted to. What's the advantage of putting it off? I don't know. Well, the Interest only rates could change. The only advantage is that we haven't, I think maybe it makes sense to wait until we have closing documents. So that way, if there's anything that changes for whatever reason, right? Not that we think that they're you going mean, to. You mean we have like a lot of closing costs for some reason? Or no, just, oh. just to like see what the, if we, if we have that much time until August, there's not a reason to. To rush. Yeah. Okay. But it's super helpful to see it. Well, I'd like to hear from Casey if we have until August, but um, I think it would be nice if Danny were here. Yep. Yeah. Danny's in uh, recovery from this. So we can New put meeting. it off to next meeting, maybe sure. we'll find out from Casey what the details are. Okay. It's fine with me. All right. So thank you for the update. And we'll move on to item four select board to review four potential candidates for the planning commission. And uh, and select one. Did you give me that sheet? Yeah, it's you right did. It's right here. You did. So this is uh, first off. Let me just say it's fantastic that we have <laughs> so much interest on any board in Hardwick, but particularly the Planning Commission. So um, just to uh, talk about our process. Um, here I can circle it. Do, 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 do. It's, it's, you know where it is. Yeah. So we uh, generally the process that 
we follow is we want to accepted your letters. We want to speak with everyone who's here tonight. Um, and then, uh, so the appointment or I'll just read from the statute. This is from Title I, uh, Chapter 5, Subchapter 2, uh, Section 313. Um, the appointment of, or employment of, or evaluation of a public officer or employee provided that the public body shall make a final decision to hire or appoint a public officer or employee in an open meeting and shall explain the reasons for its final decision during the open meeting. Oh, wait, I gotta back up a minute. <laughs> so we have this open meeting first, and then we're going to have a deliberative uh, um, executive session later. And then I think at our next meeting, we'll announce uh, an appointment. And we'll offer an explanation at that point. So that's sort of the process. Um, thank you, everybody, for your interest, because we don't always get so much interest. Um, but for those who have come, we would like to hear from you directly about Everybody why. Plans on, sorry. Hmm? Everybody plans on being here. Okay. We're, they were on the agenda for 7 o'clock for this. Yeah. But running should ahead, we, so here we, we go. So it's just Cole that's not here? Is there anybody else who's um, not here? Rob. Rob's, Rob's, Rob's here. here. Oh, there he is. Here, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and I don't, I don't know if Cole can make it. Okay, so they were on the road. Uh, let me s somewhere. I have these. Do we have these letters? Yeah, they're they're right all. Right. I think Bud was I first. Know, okay, I want to just go through in the order that we have, which is maybe not. I don't know. Maybe there may be no rhyme or reason to it. This is the order in which the letters are stacked. <laughs> so they're by date. Oh, they're by date. Yeah. All uh, right. It should be. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have a we have a letter of interest from Bud Stevens. Are you Bud? Welcome. Thank you for your interest. Do you want to just give us a little uh, anything about why you're interested in the Planning Commission? Well, I live in Hartwick. Yep. I'm interested in the kind of the economic growth of this community. I spend a lot of time in a lot of other communities, uh, primarily in housing development. I own a construction company that operates out of St. Johnsbury, and we do a lot of work up the corridor of Newport, Lindenville, St. Johnsbury. I haven't really looked at Hardwick other than reading the town plan, reading the bylaws. I can see that there's opportunity for improvement. There's, there's work that can be done to help take the, the community and define what it's going to be and align the bylaws to the town uh, I think planning is a big a big deal, and I think it's the cornerstone to any community's growth. And having that <laughs> big picture thinking, where you can look down the road, see where you're going to be, and kind of architect your plan to meet those goals. And I think uh, from what I could read and everything I've seen, there's an opportunity for Hardwick to actually have that growth economically, whether it's in housing, whether it's in recreation, um, what are we going to, we're going to define what that community is going to look like 20 years from now. That starts, that starts now. So my interest is, I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> so I'd like to see the, the community grow economically. Great. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Do people have questions for Bud? I was waiting for you, Wiz, because you're taking notes. But <laughs> see if you had a question. I don't. You don't. No, I don't. Wow. It's, it's like it's like being in algebra class before the test, and the teacher says, "Do you have any questions?" And you think, <laughs> "I don't even know if to ask a good question." <laughs> All right. If we think of something, we'll come back to you. How's that? Thank you. All right. So next, we heard. We also heard from Rob Lewis. Who's here with us tonight, Rob? Do you want to say express why uh, why you're interested in the planning commission in particular? Well, to be honest with you, I thought that with my background, I might be able to bring some expertise to the uh, current planning commission. I'm also a resident of the community and have been for 
probably the past 17 years. And I was also at one time town manager here, as well as in uh, Northfield. Uh, I also was here at what I would call the beginning of the Hardwick Renaissance through agriculture, food, uh, worked uh, hand in hand with uh, people like uh, Jasper Hill and uh, others uh, growing in the community. And, and I think we did a, a good job. Sherry was on the, the board my last couple of years. And, uh, I just <clears throat> am old enough now where I have some time. <laughs> and I thought I might bring that forward to the community and see what I can do to assist in the future growth of Parker. Uh, Great. Thanks. People have questions for Rob. Moving along. Um, <coughs> Uh, Cole would be next, but uh, Cole, Larry Flegelman's here. Hi, Larry. Hello, how are you doing? Good. Good. So, uh, I'm interested in, in serving on the Planning Commission mostly because, uh, you know, I, I've lived in town for, uh, I guess, about 12 years and have not gotten very involved yet. But yet uh, now is the time to, uh, to step up and do my part for the town. Uh, I have experience with, uh, as a school principal, which gives me a, a view toward um, you know, how policy works and government from a different angle. Uh, and I'm interested in how we grow, but how we balance that um, to, to keep our, our um, you know, the nature of our town and to make sure that we're not leaving people behind while we grow. And uh, so that's that's kind of what I'm interested in and why I'm here. Great. Thank you. Questions for Larry? No, but I have a question for Bud. You have I knew you were gonna have a question for Bud. <laughs> can feel it through your writing. You, you, you said that you you've read the plan, you've read the um, bylaws and stuff like that, and you see that there are places where they don't align well or something like that. Yeah. What, could you be specific? What are some of the things that you might suggest if you were on the planning commission? So as we think of the identity of the town, the identity of town, agriculture, a lot of green space, recreation, bedroom community, and the town plan. <clears throat> so when you look at the bylaws, the bylaws have to lend themselves to the town plan, meaning that you encourage development of those particular I guess attributes of the town. So you, whenever I read the, the bylaws, and depending on what you're trying to accomplish, say it's housing, have we defined clearly what type of housing we're looking for? Is this high density housing, low, medium, green, uh, think of a green wedge, which would be your larger parcels of agricultural, which is really what Hardwick is wrapped around. Uh, so defining that more clearly, and I, and I looked at this as a developer, and whenever I start looking at towns to decide, is there an opportunity there, I have to look at all of the, how the town operates. I, again, I wasn't looking at Hardwick as a development opportunity, but with a few conversations, there is opportunity. But I'd like to see how those two marry together. Whenever you're looking at a, a, a bylaw that, uh, for example, the PUD for a major subdivision, uh, there's a lot of ambiguity in, in what you can actually put in place. Uh, can you put in apartment buildings? Uh, how many can you put in? What's the density per acre? There's a lot of things that's left out. So you don't know if the town's ready to accept that. And those could just be questions that could be answered through the DRB. Um, but as you look for that alignment, Especially when you think of recreation, um, as we have the the Boyle Mountain uh, Memorial Valley Trail coming through, how does our bylaw align to what we want in our town plan to 
increase that, you know, that attribute. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I look for it. And I'm, I'm not saying that it was purposely left out, but there's a lot of changes that have occurred in the last few years. And that also changes our vision. So, you know, obviously our vision is only as good as we can see forward. So we may have a 20-year vision, but we're only going to be able to see two or three years down the road. So as these changes occur, we have to stay on top of, the Planning Commission's job is to stay on top of that and keep that communication open to the public, with the residents of the community, uh, all executive officers within the select board. Are we making the right changes? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I guess that's that's what I see, is, is a gap. Is, is, are we on top of that? I, I did hear that we have a, a consultant that's helping with the town plan. Um, the bylaw modernization. Oh, oh yeah, bylaw. Okay, bylaw modernization. So that's <clears throat> that's important, right? So, and I'm sure there's a big component in there for housing. And obviously, it's my area of interest. What I, what I work on, and, and I do attend a lot of meetings at other towns. Um, as I go through my learning process. So I, I learn a lot about the differentiation between town and town. And I also notice there's a <coughs> gap between regional planning and all the towns. Um, I do have contacts throughout the state on a lot of different aspects of economic development, the Tim Tierney, the Rodation uh, the people that are actually planning up here. But I, there's a disconnect between here and, and, and the towns. Unfortunately for Dave, he has two people and 56 towns that he has to manage. So sometimes there's a misalignment. And somebody at this town level communicating with the Dave Schnatters to, hey, here's what we're trying to do. How is the regional plan impacting us? There is a trickle down effect from the state down to the regional planning commission and down to the towns. So anyway, the, the alignments, there's a lot of continuity that needs to be considered whenever you're making these plans. And communication with the regional you know, planning commission. I guess I don't know if that answered. Good answer. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for any anyone? Except me. I'm not taking questions. I just had a really quick question. So how many members are in the planning commission all told? It's like nine, nine is the cap? I think seven. 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 This seat has been open for quite some time. Okay. Um, and there are plenty, there are commissioners, the, it starts in June, the, the shift in other seats that expire and okay. people re -up. So there's, so we're right now appointing for the open position, then in June there are potentially other yes. openings because there are shifts in terms. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. Yeah, and there's also um, availability on the development review board. Yeah, the RV has open spots. Yeah. Okay. We'll find a spot for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> the equity committee also has openings. Yeah, so does the energy committee. <laughs> the energy committee as well, yes. <laughs> all right. Okay, so. So exciting. Great. So That's thank great. you all thank for you all. coming. And uh, yeah, as we just discussed, uh, there's this open seat, but there may be more seats coming yeah. up in June and opportunities on the DRB. So uh, our processes will consider later an executive session and make a decision at our next meeting, mm -hmm. which will be the, uh, I, don't, I don't even know Where's where we are. Standby? Thank you. <laughs> and I appreciate all of your, all of you and your willingness to come and showcase your strengths. Yeah. In an open meeting. Yeah. And feel free to stick around. The next item is about the planning commission. Really? <laughs> it is indeed. All right. <laughs> yes. I'm saying, uh, if I might, as a postscript, I didn't delve into my, my educational background and my professional background, other than for hard work, but prior to coming here, I spent 12 years in economic development. Um, in Michigan, and I feel like I have a pretty good <laughs> grip on that process and what's right and what's wrong. Great. Thank you. There's a dog somewhere. The dog wants to, wants him too. Um, next up is item four. Select. 
Yeah, so I look forward to um, review the Planning Commission recommendations for the LVRT Loop Trail. Um, uh, it's an interesting title. Well, it's based on the, the study that the um, local, local motion did, and also that better conditions, that grant that about the, that created the loop from the LVRT in the downtown, right? Which is included the bridge, right? And the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This was part of the grant that moved the USDA funds down to the bridge yeah. from the completion of those so trails. This is what makes yeah. us able to shift those funds. Right, yeah. and doing the connection. Doing this connection. Yep. Yeah. So what? So are these from the from the local motion? They're based on the local motion okay. study. Yeah. Suggestions that the recommendations that they made. Right. That then the planning commission reviewed that and pulled out the things that we thought were the most, you know, mm -hmm. priority. Um, yeah, I would say you vetted the their um, extensive study. Right to the more important things because some of them were a little uh, unrealistic, yeah. in my opinion. Like taking up the sidewalk on with me. Like sending bikers <laughs> up over the top of the hill on the street. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a lot of these say time sensitive sharing. So I know in the past one thing that we've stumbled on is like missing seasons because we haven't been able to make decisions in time. So like we've missed the painting. Right, so, so we want to make these decisions before we do right. any painting that we don't actually want. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I know Tom's not here tonight, but can we make some of these decisions right now and then get them basically slated for painting if that happens in North May? Main Street is going to get paved. The stretch, yeah, yeah. is going to get paved, so we'll have a clean yeah. slate, blank canvas. Oh, nice. So, the f item number one says remove the center line from North Main Street, but we don't actually strike the center lines anyway. Like the state comes through and does that mm -hmm. without warning. Right. So how do you prevent a, a center line from being? I suppose you could just let them know. But you don't even know when they're. Not to do it. You can do that, and that works. Yeah, apparently so. Okay. I, According to the <clears throat> motion, yeah. Okay. I highly recommend. Um, I might not be a. Um, people might not like me after this comment, but <laughs> I highly highly recommend keeping the center line on a roadway. On North Main Street. On North Main Street. But that's, I'm just one voice. Because? It separates traffic going either direction. Yeah. Well, yeah. so why, where does this come from? Um, I bike, know local bike and pedestrian safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so is the point that if we don't have a center line, then there's more room for a bike lane? Is that the idea, or? No, it's more that if people are not. Okay. Um, no, we're just when you're driving, you're paying attention to the what's on the road versus what's in the line. You know, like for instance, out here, if we took the center line off of Church Street, it yeah. would potentially help us in the way that it did when we never put it back on. We the other side? Them. We don't have a center line out there. There yeah, is. I had one. It's right. just worn off. Yeah. Um, so it's actually, because you, you have to cross the line in order to actually drive down the road most of the, most every day, every minute of every day, because of the way the parking is. Right. So they're saying that it actually makes people more aware of what's happening on the road in front of them if there isn't a center line. I know. I thought it sounded weird at first, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. it's an interesting concept. My only concern is the the blinking light is already confusing enough for people who don't know Hardwick that maybe that section would be. That's not on here. Yeah. No, but if but if I'm just saying that like if. We should add another one. <laughs> we should definitely add another okay. blinking light, but. Um, I guess the time sensitivity of that is we have to wait until we pave any, we're repaving anyway. Yeah. So, and that's happening. In 
whenever the pavers so, come through. Okay, so we don't, it doesn't make sense to do, we're not gonna paint that line before that anyway, right? No. No, we shouldn't paint anything before that, really. Could we remove it for a year and see what opens? Sure. I mean, we, re we remove it every year. This, this, this gets <laughs> with the re snow plows. taken out every year, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I don't think you can see a... A center line? No. We, I mean, it's worth a shot. It's worth it. I don't think there's a center line past the crosswalk. The other might be now. They, but, yes, there is. When the they ground? came through and striped, I think they striped all the way up to mm -hmm. where the pavement ends. Well, we've got, well, we've got a... a line up there now. Yeah. Uh, I think we should give it a try with that whole line. Okay. Yeah. See what happens. You'll let us know, Mike, if it's a disaster. <laughs> I, I, my only concern was having one bike lane going up the hill. Yeah, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're supposed to ride down that as well? Well, because it's slow, it's slow traffic, and cars would be going faster going up the hill than a bike. So that's why you give a bike oh, its own lane. Only on the way up. Because if they're going down the hill, they they're can probably drive with going traffic. the same right. speed as a car. <clears throat> Or does that or but, faster? But do you think okay. But they have to abide by all the same traffic safety traffic laws. Like so. Right, they do. Yeah. And I'm just thinking of people leaving school or something like that. Is right. right. Leaving. Um, does that crowd them if you have a bike lane on the right? But they can ride it from my understanding of it, you can ride in the bike lane. So there's no parking. When the there's right. two cars passing. And there's parking on the left side. On the downhill side, there's parking. Right. And they want to remove that parking. That's the recommendation, right? Yeah, I didn't know That's, that. Oh, no. Did you bet? Did you take that one out? I didn't out? know that. Yeah. That was in the original report. It's not part of this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wondered about the item three about trying to encourage people to leave their bikes at the Memorial Park and walk down. Mm -hmm. We want to, well, I guess that's fine, but if I'm on my bike, I'm probably going to roll down. I'm not going to want to walk. Well, um, I think they were thinking about um, people potentially that are not as experienced cyclists as you are possibly or people with kids so they would maybe lock their bike up and walk down just because at least they're on the sidewalk um, because as you get down to where the Hardwick Inn is you get into a muddle with the way that cars park there mm -hmm. and bikes would be going behind those mm -hmm. cars that are also mm -hmm. moving and yeah. Yeah. So that was the, the whole that's thing. why they talked about it. Okay. Yeah. You should make it encouraging people to yeah, giving it. them an opportunity at least right. to if they were yeah, to lock up. Okay. And we're not um that little median thing that V Trans put in that we can't really use right like right at the crosswalk. We can't put a bike right bike rack there, can we? Because there's a yeah, space. That's a great place to put a bike rack. Yeah. It could be temper. it could be one of the marks that we can. There, so we can yeah. put a bike rack. You could do both. You could do both. Yeah, okay. As long as nothing, no truck plows into it. Drives over it, parks on it. Well, if you do a planter at each end, yeah. it would protect it's it. protected. Yeah, I mean, I like in terms of when I bike in town, the worst part is Main Street. North Main Street is never really a problem. Right. Um, but the scariest is like that intersection mm -hmm. in Main Street. Yep, I agree. Um, and then six installed bike racks in the Peace Park. Would those be like down over the stairs? Or where the bench is, maybe? There's not room there, I don't think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was part of their recommendations and the Planning Commission thought that was an okay idea. I don't know that. I, I think we were also thinking that there was going to be construction and there wouldn't potentially be the bike rack that's sitting in that gravel part and all that. So, okay. where, would the, where would bike racks be closer to the center of town? And Peace Park was a suggestion. I see. But 
we also need to think about how we deal with the Peaks Park right now. Is that giant mound of black snow finally melted? Because it pushed all the snow off the road and into the park, so it made it super nice. Off the road or off the sidewalk? I don't know. Both, probably. Yeah, it's pretty it was anyway. a huge mound of uh, they didn't quite make it to the, the river. Beautiful snow. We can't put it in the river sticks anymore. Around a long time. I know. <laughs> I know we can't. It leaches into the river. After. Yeah. <laughs> it gets there. Right? Percolates. Anyway, yeah. Um, I like the idea of uh, bike racks or corrals near the Hardwick Inn. I mean, as we were just talking about, like that would be you could roll down the hill and you park, mm -hmm. and you're at and you're at Main Street. That's great. I don't. I guess. I don't quite see where that would go in my mind's eye right now, but yeah. I like the concept. We don't either. Yeah. That okay. medium. Could we talk to the laundromat about that weird little lawn? To the that would be a good spot too. There's not a crosswalk right there yet, right now, but that's yeah. number nine. Yeah. <laughs> but if there was a crosswalk, then you could go right across. Oh, is number nine doing it? Is that a crosswalk at the intersection? So or at, at the bridge. The intersection. It's up. That's it's up from the intersection, mm -hmm. so yeah, the part again, then there's the driveway yeah. into the parking, and then there where there's yeah. a curb cut before the bridge would be it's the it's the narrower place to cross, okay, where you can actually see cars that are yep. potentially turning that are going to hit you if you cross <laughs> further up closer to the corner, right? Right, yeah, okay, so that's where they suggested, yeah, just to yeah, bring yeah, it back. I think that makes sense. Um, so it sounds like we need to think about it. Would it would be nice to do bike rack somewhere near the Hardwick Inn if we can find a place to do that? And oh, there's the there's the pad that bump out there. Mm -hmm. Is there room? Oh, there might be room. We there. could do one of the that one or nice. two of these little stand up. There's a bump out. Yeah, by the yeah. by the crosswalk yeah. sign. Yeah. By the crosswalk right there. Um, or we can pull it back um, in that parallel spot, yeah. like half of that parallel spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, during, well, I started to look at this and I want to talk to Larry Hamill, but the sidewalk in front of the inn um, wasn't always there. Mm -hmm. And if, if we got rid of that sidewalk and had an agreement with Larry to open up the awning and the porch, as the sidewalk, uh -huh. we would eliminate all that ice and water that comes off the roof in the wintertime and makes that all ice. Hmm. And would also push cars closer to the building and pull up, nose in more. Nose in more so it would take them hmm. out of that intersection. And then we could maybe play with that with the corral in there. Hmm. Um, That's a good accessibility though. Yeah. yeah. They do, they put some tables and chairs. Yeah. yeah. In the way the walkway would right especially yeah, i mean you can bike. still get through there but it wouldn't be ada if they have that stuff out there well we'd have to make right. make it ada right. yeah because there's a step up right on the other side right okay so that whole thing requires some more thought and study right. and so right. it sounds like you're thinking about it i just it's great throwing it out there yeah <laughs> and most of the rest of the i think most of the rest of this really should wait until we we pay I only, I mean, my only question about bike racks is I know we bought some last year, but is this actually physically installed? Are these in addition to the ones we bought last year? We bought some like have, movable. I think we have three left. Okay. One is going to have been placed. Okay. One is going to go up to East Harvard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's two left over. Okay. So we could put one down at the little, mm -hmm. at a couple places in town and then, okay. Do we have any idea when the paving is going to happen? For North Maine, no. Yeah. In summer, probably. Last year it happened late. It happened right in August. They were, yeah. they were really late last yeah. year. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's, it needs to be done. If we're going to make the changes in the way that painting is done, this park is done this week, it needs to be done before it's paved, but it doesn't have to happen before the next meeting. Is that right? We would, I mean, we would decide on how to paint it prior to the paving. Right. And then have that plan after it's paved. Right. Uh, the crosswalks, we would have to do new approaches. 
and then put in the ABA pads. So we'd have to decide where we want to put the crosswalks. So that's more complicated. I was thinking about items one and two. They're pretty simple. You're, next time you paint, don't paint the center line. Correct. And do paint a bike line. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that's all there is to that. Mm -hmm. Well, but one, you have to notify the state somehow. And yeah, then that's once we decide we mm -hmm. want to do that, then we need yeah. to mm -hmm. notify the state. That's, yeah, that's not a big deal. Okay. The rest of it can be more complicated. <clears throat> is there a reason why we're not just extending that bike lane all the way to Hazen? Since there are a lot of kids that bike up there, if we're going to do it. Does it cost us that much more? No, it's just because it's not part of this loop. Because oh, okay. the loop requirement right. is, um, you know, based right. on LBRT. Okay. And the budge. We could. It's not. Yeah, it's a practical matter. There's no matter. reason why we couldn't do it's it. It's just a question. That was yeah. just, that's just why the planning commission yep. was looking at that connector loop thing, because yep. it's something yeah. that we need to. Yeah, I like going all the way to Hazen. It's mm -hmm. where the sidewalk ends. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And there is a connection. The Trails Committee is putting in a link between the Hardwick Trails and the LBRT. And so you could argue that, in fact, going to Hazen does, in fact, enhance the loop. It does. Adds, mm -hmm. adds more connectivity. Mm -hmm. Yep. And All right. So while we're talking about painting, mm -hmm. uh, the engineer from the state class one highway project this past summer. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be here, I'm meeting with them next week because there's a bunch of punch list items for um, options. Oh, good. And all the paint is, they're gonna figure out what they are. They're gonna probably grind it all off and repaint it. Because mm -hmm. everything's, that was supposed to last. More than, <laughs> more than a few months. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. They just use what we use. Optimus. Yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will talk to him about the crosswalk in the best uh, course of action. And I, I might throw out that we could put a crosswalk on the north side of the bridge. Because the reason why there wasn't a crosswalk, like the, the argument was that there was, they didn't put a crosswalk in at the intersection where they should be because they're, it's too wide. Mm -hmm. And then at the bridge, peep cars coming around the corner, they don't have enough time to stop for a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. So if we moved it to the north side of the bridge, that might be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. It's also less handy if you're already down at the intersection trying to make that cross. Mm -hmm. right. People just walk across anyway, I guess. Right. Yeah. 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 All but right. I'll talk to them about that. Awesome. Okay. Do you have drainage issues on that punch list? I noticed a puddle in front of the clip joint that didn't have a place to go. It's not making it to the catch basin. Right, is a little it, bit beyond, it, a little bit uphill. Is it uphill? Yeah. 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 You have that kind of stuff on your... So He does. Okay, yeah, yeah. He knows. Okay. So it sounds like we're basically going to do all these except for those bike rack changes. Is there anything that we need to like make a decision about? Is this there was the side? adding crosswalks on North Main Street to okay. the south end of the car bridge and then adding right out right here. here add three crosswalks at the intersection of East Church Street, Church Street, and North Main Street. I think that means West Church Street. You should say West. It's a typo. West. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I just, and this is their recommendation based on uh, what they saw happening when they observed. I mean, that's how people cross. Yeah. They cross right. out the corners. Right. They don't yeah. walk down to this weird thing no. down here. <laughs> no. It goes into a driveway anyway. Um, but... I mean, we should consider um, regrading the sidewalk so that it slips to the road and mm -hmm. doesn't have a big curb. Mm -hmm. um, it should be nice at the library side and over here. I think those yeah. are two. And can we, does, is there not going to be a crosswalk on the trail crossing? No, that already has it. The trail crossing has its own. Oh, you mean is it going to be striped? Yeah. I know it's a great they don't question. stripe them. They do in Morseville. They do? Mm -hmm. Oh. The one in Morseville. I'm wondering if what they're going to do down at um, the 1415 crossing. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing there either. Yeah. But this one's tricky What's with the hill. Guys it's, but I wonder yeah. if that's a way to get, I, if I, do I, it I this year. Because you can get 
like from that side over to this side. I guess there's not a sidewalk over there, but it's convenient to be able to look at this during the meeting. <laughs> yeah, it is. You can look right out and see what's what. Yeah, that's a great question. Okay. And I've, I've wondered that same, and then even the crossing up here too. Yeah. But the tr I'm pretty sure that the state in building the trail or and engineering it did, did made a conscious decision not to stripe the crossings. You're going to take that to the regional question. Yeah. So a question for Jackie Casino, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, they wouldn't, I can't imagine they would stop us from striping them, but they had a reason they didn't want to strike them. Yeah. Well, we don't control the highway down on the other end of the town. No, but this one. This one we do, yeah. Yeah, because none of the major ones are striped where the trail has that grade crossing, like in uh, West Ham Village, Joe's Pond, or <laughs> heading uh, between Johnson and. You gotta take your plane bridge your hands to cross the road. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that one's. So, crazy. can I just bring us back to this? And yeah. I can't, uh, do you need a motion that we're gonna, the select board is gonna accept these recommendations? And, or what? Yeah, that's a good question. Or we just review I don't know that we need to. I mean, we're. Aren't we. Take the recommendations and. Yeah, and do what we can. Right. Yeah. My only question, Sherry, is I know we talked about this a couple years ago and it didn't happen. Are any of the recommendations including different paint? Because I know that's come up before. We or gave just up like. On that. Okay. Just, okay. just regular white. Okay. Up. That's highest visibility. Okay. Up. I'll bring that back to another day. <laughs> <laughs> when, well, when do we have to paint the crosswalk? Some other time. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to pay to paint the crosswalk. Yeah, for, for here, for now. Yeah. We could put it up. We could do uh, colorful paint crosswalks. I can yes, ask. Do you want to ask? No. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask for Sherry. <laughs> the only other thing, though, is do we. Do we need more? Are we going to need to find budget for more um, bike racks? If we only have, it sounds like we have three ones spoken for. Are we we good? I think we have a total of five or six. I don't know. So we just roll what we have for now? Yeah, it doesn't, one, doesn't seem like we have that many more locations. Fish. It's like two. Okay. Are people going to be I mean, like, as long as they get so. placed <laughs> so that they're actually usable in the placement, <coughs> unlike the one that is on Main Street right now. Yeah. That isn't usable in the placement that it's in. No, but you can walk it. It has to be turned right, yep. ninety degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, did they pick that up, or was that there? I don't know. All right. I, don't it's there. I can't move it physically. So, so let's. It hasn't. Moved. It hasn't. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> you guys, let's move yes. on and let's have this uh, these recommendations be uh, help guide us when we do the repaving. Great. Is that good? Yep, and Vince is here too. I saw. Um, all right, so we were we were running a little head. We are no longer running a little head. Yeah, we took care of that. But Vince, you're here, I assume, to give a, a light department report? Yes, my apologies. I actually was waiting because I thought it was, yeah, anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. It just Zoom changed my time to seven, not six. Well, the agenda said six, so I didn't look at the agenda. So again, my apologies. So this uh, uh, here's some the data the, uh, from as relayed by Mike uh, regarding the utility, and then I'll have some more extemporaneous information after that. Uh, there's a recent uh, PUC hearing uh, about the uh, rate increase, and the PUC had. There's a, a certain amount of uh, public involvement and uh, response, and there, the discussion appeared to be uh, reasonable, and most questions were resolved. Um, and the PUC is just deliberating right now about the rate increase. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of the, the process that you have to go through for the rate increase, but um, did can I just ask? Did the did Hardwick Electric has the Ability to increase rates prior to the rate increase being approved, right? Did you decide uh, not do, to do but that? If the PUC um, declines the, you know, it yeah, then you have to pay it back. Then it has to be retroactively yep. refunded. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. the decision was to not do that. You're just waiting for the PUC decision. Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, the cash flow is warrants that that can be the case right now. Okay. Um, 
Uh, look at hydro, 61% uh, over budget, um, uh, and it's generating about 13% of energy needs. Let's see. Operating revenue is about 1% over budget, uh, and expenses are about 1% over budget. Uh, let's see. The uh, HED's new charging station is going to be installed within about six weeks. Uh, it's a it's a, a payment charging station. You know, you can swipe your card, and that'll be at the at the HED headquarters. Um, these are the those are the kind of factual information that uh, Mike gave me. Uh, other information, um, FEPSA has been working uh, for about a year on creating a, pro a proposal for uh, implementing AMI, uh, Advanced Metering Infrastructure. And uh, there are a lot of components to this. Uh, right now, the Hydric Electric Board has declined to participate, uh, conditionally declined, because of the impact it would have on rates, potential impact on rates, and the, uh, the minimal return for what we regard as an intermediate technological solution for what will ultimately be something a lot more, a lot cheaper and more usable. I mean, it's, it's a really complicated solution. The um, the smart meters, uh, you know, it's a, it's a it's a uh, company specific technology uh, that costs a lot of money, and the state's providing about half the funding through federal grants, uh, but it would still end up costing around seven hundred thousand dollars. So. We're, I think, the only one of two out of the uh, 12 utilities, FEPSA utilities, that have decided to not, at least at this time, um, uh, take part take part in the uh, in this plan to implement this. Well, reserving the right to do it in the future. I mean, the, the return on the AMI is just a, it's it's really minimal with a huge amount of expense. Um, Energy prices are, are predicted to go down over the summer. Uh, those won't have any effect on the rates just because of the way you have to uh, apply for rate changes. Uh, let's see, the board, this is kind of a recent change. Um, and something that not, I'm not representing part of electric other than indirectly right now is that I personally want to be more involved in uh, grid transition, uh, you know, productive uh, um, infrastructure improvements like uh, solar and batteries, stuff like that. But in any case, um, it, it feels like uh, there are a couple of uh, members and there's a general tenor within the board that uh, is more amenable to looking at getting more grant funding for this type of thing. And, you know, that I'm saying that personally and not as a board representative, but as connected to the board. So, if you have any questions regarding that, then I'd be happy to answer. Um, that, um, that's pretty much it, unless you have any additional questions. Um, related to that last item, I thought um, HED board was looking at um, uh, some peak shaving technology involving batteries and storage. It is that going anywhere? Or? It really, you know, the, okay, I don't want to overstate things or, or misspeak. Uh, mostly the, uh, the, the, the conduit for these type of projects is through VEPSA. And if VEPSA doesn't present them, they generally, they don't get examined because the board is more uh, reviewing and reactive than it is, you know, it's not an activist board, and that, that's not a bad thing. That's just the nature of the of the utility structure of VEPSA of the, of the state statutes, and uh, so while yeah, they're, they're, they're they are looking at the utility scale battery at H11, and um, VEPSA has a preferred provider. I personally suggested that we get multiple requests for. Uh, their proposals for this type of thing. Um, I mean, it's a great idea. 
the one drawback of the battery is that it just sits there. I mean, it provides huge services to peak shaving, which can uh, really, uh, it, it can help reduce the, uh, the peak load and ultimately the rates. And, uh, you know, it has a lot of great benefits and environmental benefits. Um, but other, other than that, when it's not in use for those two hours or four hours of a month, it just sits there. So it's a huge expense. So, uh, yeah, I, I, this isn't the appropriate time to bring up like what I personally want to pursue. But uh, yes. Uh, so that's still yeah. that's still out there, but kind of. It's still out there. It's one particular vendor. Time. We haven't had any more uh, interaction with them. We had two proposals, uh, two meetings. They determined that uh, there was a very viable uh, site at H11. Um, for storage and uh, just just because of the, where it was, and it's right, you know, the best place for storage is right at the generation site, and the wires are there, and yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a great idea. Okay, so but, but it's 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 in abeyance right now. I mean, and we're just waiting. Okay. Uh, other questions for Vince? Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Well, thank you. And, and, and again, I don't want to like, it's, one, it's uh, uh, navigating a narrow path because I don't want to misspeak or misrepresent the board or anything. Some of these are my personal opinions <laughs> and some are board information. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's exciting about the EV charger. Yeah, we've been yeah, hearing about happening. the EV charger for a while. <laughs> so. well, I, I, one other, uh, this is related and unrelated. Uh, Almost done installing a resilience center at the Crassbury Library, uh, which is solar and storage, and it's there to provide um, internet, uh, heat, and power, and light. Uh, you know, in case of power outage, extended power outage, and um, I, I think it's a great model to pursue in any community. And uh, I'd be happy to give more information about that at some other time. Okay. Yeah, it might be interesting to look at. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, so back to our uh, where we were, which is heading into item number six. Select board to consider formally approving the new cemetery policy, which WizDAO was uh, so kind to work on for so long. And uh, we went through it. We did. We Pretty, passed it, uh, but we didn't sign it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that was the problem. OK, got it. So. Um, so all we need to do is sign it. We we do we need Basically. to. Basically. Okay. So we already accepted. We already accepted it. Accepted, yeah. So that's all we're doing, and that's this one, I think. Have we yes. hired a sexton yet, or we have to do that after we sign this policy? No, we've um, we've just got to sign a contract. Cool. We updated the fees. So do you need all that stuff back? What's that? You need all the sandborn stuff? Yeah, we will. Are I'll you bring it back. She says with a smile. Not to worry. <laughs> um, great. So, all right. So we don't. Do we? It says to consider formally approving, but we're we already approved it. We've already approved it. So we're just okay. So great. Thank you. And we'll so Sexton coming soon, um, which will be a great help. All right. So we're, we we. Um, Deleted item seven. So next is item eight. Select board to consider participating in the t fiscal year 24 grant and aid program and sign the letter of intent. This is for the highways. Um, Back roads. Well, okay. There's still highways. We do this every year, right? Pretty much. We do this every year. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I can motion to approve uh, participating in the FY24 grant and aid program. Is there anything else? Do we have to? Do we have to authorize? Do we have to? Do we have to we all have to sign it or, or do you have to authorize? Okay. Where are we? So we just pick one of these and uh, yeah. oh, we've got an original. Great. So we have a motion to um, approve the letter intent of intent to participate in the fiscal year 24 municipal roads grant needs program. Sorry, do we have a second? Mm -hmm. You did? Mm -hmm. did. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. Wait a minute. <coughs> All we've got is a duly authorized representative signature place here. That's Just what it was last year. Oh, that's me? Just you. Oh. <laughs> well, it's kind of there. <coughs> um, next is item nine. Select board to consider approving a method of payment policy. Who knew we needed a method of payment policy? <laughs> but it does seem pretty simple. Tanya, are you here for that too? Yeah. Do you want to say anything about it? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had someone come in earlier this week who was upset about something, so he paid two water and sewer bills nearly 400, more than half of it was in pennies. <laughs> the remainder was in quarters, bags, and nickels. It took six of us to count it while I counted. Oh, we have a load, we had to help carry in. Just like to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, good. The policy generally says you accept, uh, we accept check, cash, credit card, money order, and it just limits the amount you can bring in and change. Yep. <laughs> It's probably a, I didn't, it's too bad you have to do this. Can we name the policy after the person? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. All right, so does anybody have any, uh, or does somebody want to make a motion to approve the policy? So moved. Second. <laughs> okay, uh, any discussion about the policy? I think it looks great. It's great. Should we put in large bills or? <laughs> We need to let, let Unmarked. take out ones, fives, and tens. No. Yeah, it just, no, it's good. It should be enough. Yeah. So all in favor. I think this is not um, equitable, but. Oh, because you want to be able to bring in your pennies? I don't know. I don't want to start fights. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, no, but can't you take, you can take those to the bank to get. You yeah, definitely, the yes. I'm, I'm definitely kidding. taking them to the bank. All in favor of. We're just being difficult. You are all in favor of approving the um, method of payment policy. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you guys for dealing with, uh, I'm sure gracefully, with people coming in with pennies. Um, next is item 10 Select Board to authorize town manager to execute the EDA grant management agreement for the Yellow Barn project. And the uh, document is going to the NMTC attorneys. So the um, so Allison wanted pending the attorney's decision. Pending. Pending the attorney's decision. To be added to this <laughs> to the multi <multiple. laughs> Select board to authorize the town manager to execute an EDA grant management, management agreement. The Yellow Barn. The Yellow Barn. Pending an MTC lawyer yeah, decision. decision. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. Does anybody want any explanation on that or not? No. Does this mean they're going to start working on that thing? It does mean that they're going to start working on that thing. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. It's that big economic it's that development thing project. Yeah, it's you mean the number one economic development project in the Northeast Kingdom? Yes. Right? That's the one. <laughs> yes. The big one. So just um, since I'm likely shortly to be not allowed to speak about this anymore, <laughs> due to an email, fortunately our lawyer Ed caught this because I also sit on the um, board of the nonprofit that's going to run it because we thought right. that at the time that that was a good idea. Now I'm not so sure. Now you'll have to recuse yourself whenever we talk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Which is okay, but I don't know if that... Anyway, um, but I'll just say where we are right now is that we are working toward the NMTC, the New Markets Tax Credit Closing. Just got a date to hit that closing on May 4th. Um, everybody's been working hard to get there. That's a lot. Yeah, that's in and two weeks. It's in two weeks, but it's the last bit of the funding. It's about $2 million in, in funding. So when that happens, we have the uh, Wright and Morrissey, the contractors, ready to go. They're, they said as soon as we tell them they can go, they'll be here within days. So that's where we are. Okay. Yeah. It's going to happen. Seems like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. All right. So did we vote on that motion? I don't think we did. 
Let's not screw this one up. All in favor <laughs> of, uh, of the motion to authorize town manager to sign the grant management agreement, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is select board reports. I already did mine kind of in that. I've got one. Um, so the equity committee has been working with the Peace and Justice Center, and we are going to be having a panel event on May 16th. Um, there's going to be a community meal at 5.30 and then um, a panel from 6 to 7. And the focus is on the history of Juneteenth and the lived experiences of people of color in Vermont. And where? Here. Here. In this building. Okay. Right here. And it's Ju May 16th. 16th, which is a Tuesday. Yep. Okay. And then the next night, if you come to that, you can also come to the Conservation Commission kickoff for, uh, I don't know what time it is, but their, um, what's the name? Natural, Natural, Natural Resources, Resources inventory. inventory. Oh, I didn't realize it was kicking off. They're having a little uh, question and answer session with the person they hired to do the inventory. All right. Is that also here? It's also here. I think it's also at like six. Okay. And there, are they serving food? I don't know that detail. That's a... Big, big factor. It was a joke. I don't think Anyone else have select board reports? I do. Um, the Historical Society is holding its annual meeting on the 15th of May at 7 o'clock in the townhouse. Given that our headquarters are the old railroad depot and given that the rail trail is coming by um, this year, we are having a program called of Wheelman, The New Woman, and Good Roads, <laughs> Bicycling in Vermont, 1880 to 1920. And it's free, open to the public, and you're all invited. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And if you want to know more, uh, there's a link on our website, which is Vermont, excuse me, Hardwick Vermont History Org. It's the same as the town, but you add history after. So VT is abbreviated. Pardon me. Is VT abbreviated? Or? VT is abbreviated. Hardwick yeah. VT Vermont or VT. History dot org. Okay. Hmm. Sherry. I don't think I have it. What? Imagine that. <laughs> this is a historic moment. Yeah, <laughs> it is a historic moment. All right. Any new business or old business? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, cool. meetings, and they are looking for sponsors. Um, Spring Fest will be on Memorial Day weekend. Weekend, yeah, Saturday. Yeah. They'll be selling duck drop tickets too at the local businesses. Um. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. We don't know. There's no like poster or anything, but it's coming, I think. And then the I have a few of the sponsorship forms if anybody's <coughs> interested at Whistle. Um, What's a sponsorship involved? It's all on Money. the form, two sides. <laughs> <laughs> there are different levels. The elevator. There are different <laughs> levels at which you can sponsor. Uh, it's basically you're you're donating money to support the event. Okay. I think that's yeah. sufficient. Yeah. Okay. So if people are interested in doing that, they should, they could go to the whistle. They can come to the whistle. Could they come to the town manager's office? You guys yeah, can help. Town clerk's office. We can get some. Clerk? Do you have forms for, no? Or? If somebody has them, we'll put them in there. Okay. We, we can get some. Yeah. All right. Cool. Great. Uh, could I have a, um, Motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 VSA 313 for an appointment of a public officer. So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Thanks, everybody. Are we, we're, going, we're going down. Huh? We don't have to, but we can. We can. Nice to meet you. Let's go. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming.